Hey, welcome back to the Conservation Conversation. This is episode eight. It's amazing. I'm just so excited that we are here. Yeah, it was an idea that we all sort of jumped in and started a little while ago, and it's exciting to see it grow and grow. Today, we're going to talk about health and about how the way that you live will affect the world around you and how we can clean up the world around us. Uh, like eco Roombas, <laughs> uh, starting with ourselves first. So we're very excited. We have a great guest today, Allison Jade. It's going to be on and talk about how to transition over to a healthier lifestyle, regardless of where you are right now. So I hope everybody has a bunch of questions and comments, and I can't wait to talk to everybody today. Uh, it's, it's not so much about uh, the concept of being vegan, but about the concept of how to live healthier and more sustainably. So it's our world. Let's talk about it. All right, here we go. Hey, everybody. Nice to see you here. Hey, Heather. Glad you're here. Colleen. Oh, great. All right. We got a nice people. Hey, Andrea. Welcome back. And, um, <clears throat> Here we go. I'm so excited we have today going on. So today I wanted to um, actually start with a great quote uh, by an author named Jean Baudrillard, who wrote a book um, called Simulacra and Simulation. <clears throat> and his quote is that illusion is no longer possible because the real is no longer possible. So, um, Baudrillard had the concept of the simulacrum, and the simulacrum is where, here we go, sorry, the simulacrum is where, uh, here we go, hey Bruce, oh good, I'm glad Bruce is here today, Bruce has been working really hard on trying to even take what was already a healthy, very healthy lifestyle and live mindful and health and healthy, so I hope, um, I can't wait to hear what you have to say today, Bruce, and have you involved in the conversation, and um yeah, like I said, I'm glad everybody's here today. It's, it's you know, and it's a very exciting conversation because the idea is that we all want to be healthier and we all want to see a healthier world. So how can we accomplish that together? So uh, as Baudrillard, well, he created what the idea was called the simulacrum. Now the simulacrum is where we create a copy of something and then make that copy of something turns into the real thing. Uh, a very, very simple, simple example of it that probably isn't the best example would be like Disneyland, for example. Um, kids go to Disneyland, they see Mickey Mouse and they think it's Mickey Mouse. They don't think it's, you know, Bill the actor <laughs> uh, that's playing Mickey Mouse. <clears throat> and when the parents retell the story, they will just simply call him Mickey Mouse. And it's a way that we have come to accept copies of truth, you know, uh, prescribed illusions as reality. So a lot of times we live in the simulacrum and, you know, I mean, even right now, like we're, we're online, we're in this weird simulacrum We're you know, um, anyway, it's a very interesting thing. And it's a concept that comes up today because we're talking about health and, uh, Hey Rhonda, nice to see you. I'm glad you're here today. Rhonda, uh, Rhonda is, has been a long term, um, activist and clean water activists so and michelle hey michelle all right this is great everybody's here today um so you know the, okay so if we take the concept of the simulacrum and we take the idea what baudrillard is talking about and uh, we apply it to what we know about food in general um ac across the board now one of the things that i did want to talk about is that you know I, there's a thing in america called the ag gag laws and I don't know if, if they're everywhere, um, but the ag -Ag laws are, let's see if we can bring these up here. Okay, so we have ag -Ag laws in the U.S. that go across the country. And our ag -Ag laws prevent whistleblowers and activists from actually showing what happens inside of factory farming. So this is one of the problems. Now, this coupled with the idea that anyone defending uh, the environment is now considered an eco-terrorist, and eco-terrorism has gone to the number one place in uh, what the FBI uh, has said is on their list of uh, important topics. So, 
what we have right now is an era where we ha we heard a story for years and years and years of how things ran and that illusion is now being broken and we're starting to see past it so you know uh we're thinking more in terms now of of big agriculture and a lot of us didn't realize that that was happening for a long time um and a lot of us were raised on it i mean i i certainly was and you know nobody thought that there was anything dangerous about it uh now luckily due to a lot of activism and a lot of um whistleblowers and a lot of people coming forward undercover videos uh i would also like to take a, a big shout out here to direct action everywhere uh, they go in and expose what's happening and challenge these ag gag laws and they challenge the other laws that um, have to do with the abuses that are taking place there and um, the violations that are in place. Uh, like most things in, in, our, in our society, as we saw with water and as we've seen with a lot of medicines and other things, there is a certain amount of laws that sound good for both sides and then there is the enforcement <laughs> and the enforcement is generally where everything disappears so direct action everywhere takes cameras into you know uh, farms slaughterhouses and uh, right now Priya one of uh, my friends that is in that group is facing eight felonies um, for going in and exposing what was happening at uh, at some farms recently so if you're interested in direct action and you're interested in getting involved or you just want to know more about their pursuit of what's called the animal rights bill which is interesting because carl degert was on talking about the rights of nature uh movement that's a and now an international movement hey joanne i'm glad you're here hey camilla thanks for joining us today and um i know right ag gag you wouldn't think that it's it's actually a thing but it's amazing so you know what we have is we have a whole new world where legal challenges are being done um we have a world where Cameras are going in and going around. It's not right to have perfect transparency in our food. Now, Heather, that's a fascinating idea. I'm curious why, uh, what your thoughts are on that. Um, why, uh, you know, what, what, it's not right to not, it's not right to not have perfect transparency in our food. Yes, okay, I'm sorry, I misread it. <laughs> totally my misunderstanding. Absolutely, I agree 100%. And, you're right. Um, you know, and this is the thing is that we have just been requesting that companies are honest with us. I mean, look, OK, I'm vegan. Uh, some of my friends are not vegan. It's not you know, I'm, I'm not here to replace a dietitian or a nutritionist or, or a doctor's prescription on how your body should run. I just have my personal experience. Uh, it works for my body perfectly and even better than before. So you know i want to know what's happening but if you eat meat you also want to know what's in your food um you know one of the biggest secrets is seafood and a lot of you know people that i know still do eat seafood and there is so much uh fish fraud which is another episode we're going to tackle in a couple uh i think four podcasts from now uh, it's actually very important to anybody that does that and um yeah, and Heather, you're right. It's true. If you knew, you probably wouldn't eat it. And that's where direct action everywhere comes in. They're actually walking in and showing you what would be considered, you know, people think, oh, I'm going to buy this uh, free range chicken or free range egg or something. And, uh, you know, direct action everywhere is going in and showing that what was happening. Uh, now, Barbara says, I wish I could afford to be vegan. Now, Barbara, you bring up an amazing point. Um, to continue to, to eat in the way that we normally are accustomed to, it can become very expensive as a vegan. But there are fantastic alternatives and there are ways to do it. Uh, I know, I mean, I understand. I personally, you know, I've had days where I've had two to three dollars at the most for food. And it made more sense to get a 59 cent burger uh, at Carl's Jr. Um, obviously, this is before I quit eating meat. Um, now I have different ways to, to deal with it. And I, I would like to say that in a lot of times, um, we might be able to find ways to bridge that gap over. And that, that's what we're talking about today is, you know, we need to think of ourselves. We, we, it's not a sum zero total thing going on. We have a, 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 everything we do, there is a reaction from the world around us. So we can either be like these giant, um, you know, uh, we can either be like um, 
you know, if, if you think of it, every human, the way that they relate to nature, we are either going to be a sewer pipe just draining our stuff out into nature and making nature deal with it, or we're going to be like eco Roombas and we're going to be sucking up all the bad stuff and leaving it better than we found it. Leaving it better than we found it. I think that's something that all of us have in common and we all want. Uh, and that's what today's episode is about, is about leaving yourself better than you started, feeling better, and ways that you can um, make healthier transitions in your day-to-day -day lifestyle that can affect everything. And that's what I think a lot of times the, you know, the lobbying industries make us feel like we have no power. But what I'd like to say is that our daily routine is revolution. You know, what we do every day is revolution. How we act is revolution. Yeah, they're like there's people in the field that are putting their bodies in the slaughterhouse. There's people in the field that are tying themselves to trees. There are people that are legally making challenges. There are people from every aspect. But one thing we all have is a vote with our wallet. And when we go to the store, we have a moment to tell the companies what we're willing to accept and what we're not. So we have a lot of power. Uh, how you use that power is up to you, and everybody shops out of their own ethics. But, um, oh, parasites. Ooh, that does not sound good either. <laughs> um, yeah, so, you know, that that's what we want to talk about today. A lot of people think that, um, you know, the idea of getting healthier is difficult. After last week's episode, I have a few friends that said, listen, I'm going to try now to even go a little further and, and get healthy. Uh, what do I buy when I go shopping? So today with Allison, we are going to try to examine a few of the myths that surround a vegan diet, whether it's expensive, um, you know, uh, is, it, is it expensive? Is it complicated? Is it difficult? What do we buy um, and how do we approach it? Because sometimes the hardest part of, of making a change, uh, you know, and, and no matter where you are in life, I know a lot of us are always thinking, what's tomorrow hold and how can we be better? And I think the ultimate goal here is that all of us are healthier and the healthier we are, the happier we are and the more we can take care of each other. And I think that that is where our humanity will come back in and eventually overtake uh, what's happening. And look, we can vote with our wallets. It, it happens. Now, I'm going to put up an example here that might not be the best example in the world, but I want everybody to just think about this for a quick second. Uh, let's see, where is this? McDonald's, here we go. So let's just talk about this real fast. Now, whether you like it or not, McDonald's is about to bring out a vegan burger. Now, what I find interesting about this, now, okay, look, most vegans aren't going to go to McDonald's, but um, those, you know, the, the idea here is that this is for people that normally would grab a burger. Maybe they can get a vegan burger instead. But what I like is that it says McDonald's is teaming up with Beyond Meat to test a plant-based burger after massive pressure from vegetarians and vegans. Massive pressure. So when they tell you that your dollar doesn't matter and your vote doesn't count and your voice goes unheard, remember that. <laughs> there's a vegan burger coming to McDonald's. I'm already like, what? That there's a Burger King, they're at, you know, I mean, wait, wait. it's crazy to see. And again, it's not really for the vegan community, but it is for the community that votes with their wallet, votes with their choices. Um, they're seeing that there's an interest in going plant-based and they are offering this now to their consumers. And that's what's important. It's not the, the people we already have that are acting actively healthy in their lifestyles, but the people that want to be actively healthy in their lifestyles. Those are the people that we, this is gonna help, I think, no matter how we look at it. Um, so again, I come. The future depends on what we do in the present, and that can never be truer than today. We are at you know a moment where we are seeing uh, children. How much plastic are we consuming? That's the other thing. It's plastics. It's you know Heather made an amazing comment earlier that was great about we need to get back to being sustainable on our own um, to grow our own food. Uh, Jared, help. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we need to find that, we need to do that. We need to find ways to rethink what's happened. You know, in the 50s, we let the food companies take over and we took a back seat, we went into our offices, we did our thing, and that was our part of the bargain. Their part of the bargain was to feed us, but now we found out that in that process, they've been poisoning us legally. So it's now up to us to, to make that change and that 
connection. And um, I think that, you know, we really have something to, to think about that. So this week, uh, anybody, I hope somebody wants to join me. This week, I'm going to start a plastic challenge. Now, I was at the grocery store yesterday because I, my toothbrush had fallen on the floor. I needed a new toothbrush. And I realized my grocery store has only plastic toothbrushes. So then I went to a specialty store and I found the toothbrush. And I mean, yeah, these are definitely a bit expensive, more expensive, but I was able to find one without any plastic packaging or plastic use at all, which for me, look, that's just my ethics. It's how, I mean, some people aren't as concerned about that, but I love the bamboo. I love the, um, the all natural. So I started noticing though, that everything else I wanted to buy was a plastic. I walked out with nothing but my toothbrush. Um, so this week I am going to try to just live the regular day to day. And I'm curious how much plastic we have options about, right? Like for example, if you have medicine you take, obviously you can't say just throw it in a plastic, I mean a, a paper bag for me, you know? Um, so unfortunately plastics are interwoven in our law. And we see plastics as um, a safety. We see them as it means it's sterile. If the plastic band's not broken on your aspirin, you know, then this aspirin might not kill you immediately. It might um, destroy your liver over time or your kidneys, you know, but we don't talk about that part of it. So anyway, I'm just saying there's a lot of things going on. I'm going to put this on as a vlog every day on my YouTube channel and my Facebook page. And I'm just curious what we're going to run into. What changes have to be made in order to avoid running into plastic at all? And I see that everybody here is, it's the MMA made a great point. The demand is ultimately what drives the supply. That's exactly it. Your vote counts. Don't forget, guys, everything we do matters. Everything we buy matters. Every dollar we spend matters. They, McDonald's out of all places, open their minds to plant-based options because of supply and demand. So it's quite amazing. Um, Heather makes a great point. How many folks in this feed have lawns? Yes, a lot of your food can be grown yourself. And Heather, I love that. And Heather, if you have any really good um, maybe links that you can help us and throw on uh, the Facebook page, I would love to be able to share those with everybody. I think it's it's really important. Out here in California, what we do is we actually do um, native lawns so that people are not using fertilizer and grass, which is another issue. Fertilizer, it's another way that we are poisoning all of our waters. It's not good. It's necessary. It's complicated. There's no easy solution. This is the problem is that, you know, um, we have done things in one way for the last 60 years. So those of us that are younger and younger than me say, that's just the way that it is. It's the way it's done, but it's not. The younger kids are saying, we have to rethink this because the way we have been thinking has got us to where we are. So here we are. We know what we've already been thinking. How do we now make that adjustment to where what we can think progressively and think forward and think in one spirit, one unity, think for each other, think about each other's children, think about each other's grandchildren, think about the future generations. You know, um, what we have now is not what they're gonna have in 10 years and what they have in 10 years is determined by what we do now, just like Gandhi said. So we mentioned this before, um, you know, the Iroquois think seven generations ahead. So if, if, if everyone were to be thinking seven generations ahead, would we maintain our decision-making process in the route that we have done it? It's a, lot, it's a lot to think about. And I really feel very honored to be here talking to everybody because everybody in here has the same view. And everyone here has made alterations in their life to be nicer to the planet, to be kinder to the planet, and make sure you're being kinder to yourself and you're being good to yourself too. Make sure that by treating yourself well, that in turn helps the planet. Um, so, you know, don't, don't, don't forget that as well. You know, eat healthy foods, eat good things, eat things that help you. Um, you know, if you're there and you have the choice between a Snickers bar, which is wrapped in plastic and some grapes, uh, which hopefully are just sitting on the side and <laughs> you don't need any plastic, you know, try, try, try to find something that you know what's in there. Um, think about that transparency that Heather talked about. What is, that's a beautiful word. I mean, 
you know, obviously when you're buying produce, you don't know the history of the produce and, and how it's been treated or the water from the aquifer that it's been used. But if it does come through, um, local farmers, you know, you know that you're going to get something that has packed more flavor. And if you've ever had like a blueberry from an actual farm or from a farmer's market, it's so different than what you get in the supermarkets that you can almost not even compare them. Uh, cherry tomatoes are some of my absolute favorites. Um, and those I always love to get at farmer's markets. It's one of my things. <laughs> Every farmer's market, I have to see where the cherry tomatoes are. Can I get them if they're in season? Um, and that's the other thing. Buying with your dollar, but remember that when you're like us and you're vegan, remember that, you know, Heather brought up a good point too, that there is a cost associated with moving produce. So when you're going to go vegan, remember the world's not always available to you. And if you're living mindfully and you've determined to alter the way that your day to day goes and you're going to live within the confines of what's good for the environment, you can't necessarily buy too many things from too far away. You don't want to, I'm not saying limit what you're eating, but I try to when I can eat seasonally. Uh, seasonally is the best way. Uh, this is a grandmother's neighborhood. They used to collect the compost waste weekly to feed the pig farms. They don't do that anymore because people complain about the smell of the truck. See, that's the thing too. Um, you know, back in the day, people all work together. My, my family comes from the Midwest, a lot of farmers, uh, a lot of, you know, um, I think that they grew a lot of corn. I want to say that they had some cattle, maybe some dairy. I don't know the full history of the farm. They had to sell it because like most farmers, they got squeezed out by big ag and by, um, you know, and animal agriculture. Monsanto, uh, the family had to sell. So, you know, the, the problem is, is that we used to find a way where everything could work together. The land was not being destroyed in the process. The animals were not um, being tortured in the process and things were different and people trusted each other. And it goes back also to uh, removing, letting the world operate on disaster capitalism and let it run on something that is a little kinder, which I think a lot of people have in mind. You know, a lot of people will say, well, capitalism is the problem. And I would say disaster capitalism is the problem. but. I mean, everywhere I've been in the world is capitalism, even if it's not called capitalism, like, you know, you go to Russia, you go to any country and there's just, I mean, everyone's making money to, to survive. It's what happens. But uh, maybe we can turn it into a more compassionate capitalism. Most conservation is free. Most people are volunteers. Most things that are done to help the world come out of people's hearts, not their wallets. Um, I think that's something very important to remember is that you know we need to act out of compassion um and if we can do that and we can find a way to bring compassion into economy then it'll have a place right now economy is based on exploitation you know your cheaper labor um you know they're, they're torturous to the animals for all these reasons they use pesticides to cut corners and vegetarian foods like there's a lot of issues that come from this um so I just think, you know, if, if we can rethink that aspect of it, we might be able to move forward in a little bit more harmonious method where compassion has some kind of a value also. Uh, you can't put a dollar on it, but there is only money in destruction. There is almost no money in, in compassion. And I know that because I've spent the last few years traveling and it was all volunteer work. I mean, I did not get paid to, to do any of the things that I talk about or that you guys have seen. Uh, this is all because we are all just doing our part and we all have a different part we play. And remember, we're all part of one big army that fights for a, a better tomorrow. So we are all in there. Um, the kind economy, Jared, I love that. That is a beautiful, beautiful way to say it. And that's what we need to do is bring that in. And that's where we come back today to this topic in this episode of being kind to yourself and to the planet simultaneously and transitioning to a better planet by transitioning to a happier, healthier you. And we're going to talk to Alice and Jade about that. And I'm very excited to have her on. Uh, I've known her for quite a while now, and she's somebody whose whole family participates in the process of getting healthier, thinking about the world around them 
and she was just at the climate marches and her children are involved families involved husbands involved and uh so what we're going to do now is i'm very excited we're going to bring her on here in just a minute um today amazing conversation by the way i love it i love it thank you guys everybody for your input and yeah and heather like i said you had some amazing ideas about you know we really need to reclaim our understanding of nature and i think that that is a thematic uh idea that runs across everything we've talked about here and jo and georgie's here hey georgie georgie is a, a very close old friend uh from oh my gosh back from maryland somebody i've known for a long long time and georgie very lives very close to the earth and very in tune with nature um and georgie says all the isms are the same 100 percent agree they are run on exploitation of human being and the rest of creation, either for the masses benefit or for the individual gain. But it is all about gain instead of simply being. Beautiful, Georgie. By the way, everybody, Georgie is an amazing musician. Um, you can find her information on my Facebook. I'm going to put a link down there. Some of her music is a lot of her music focuses on environmental rights and environmental. I'm going to go ahead and play a video. Uh, introduction to Allison, so everybody can get an idea of, of uh, what she does and who she is. And then we are going to go ahead and come back. And then hopefully I would really encourage everybody to ask Allison questions while we're talking. Uh, this is all about how to transition to a healthier life in general. So here we go. We'll be right back with Allison. I got into the, I got you into the vegan movement through, uh, I became a, a home vegan chef. I just became obsessed with vegan cooking. She's really good. Yeah, and I, I love it passionately. I, it had sparked a whole side of myself that I, I was never a huge cook and just being vegan has unleashed mm -hmm. that passion in me. Um, I do, uh, I'm a yoga instructor, um, I'm a community builder, so I've built vegan communities in Montreal and uh, around also through social media around the globe. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm, our dream is, well, we now work from home. We, okay. I work from home. So I work in plant-based superfood nutrition. That's from a very ethical, sustainable farm. Um, right, and, and it, everything is environmental. Though. I'm helping restaurants become <clears throat> plant-based with introducing some vegan options that if they don't have any, um, I'm making vegan smoked salmon for our <laughs> Jewish deli down the street. So I'm really getting involved with getting everyone, including inclusively involved. We are back with Alice and Jane. Hey, Alice, how are you doing today? Hi, good. Thank you. Thank you so, so much nice. for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Such an honor to be on your show. I'm such a big fan of yours. Oh, fantastic. Oh, wait. Make sure and everybody can hear Alice and fantastic. Okay. It's all fixed. So, um, you know, it's very exciting to have you here today. We, we, we talked last week sort of about some medical aspects of how people can improve their health. And it spread up so much interesting conversation. But I found a lot of people were saying to me that they weren't 100% sure how to make the change. I actually had people calling me saying, you know, I want to eat a little healthier. What do I buy? I'm on my way to the grocery store. So what I'd like to start with is, first of all, if you can just give us uh, an idea of 
you know, the changes that you've seen in your family since transitioning, how difficult it was. And then we can kind of talk about, you know, how people can go about uh, in the day to day making that change over. Okay. So we, uh, we started, um, as a challenge, my husband and I watched the movie, what the health, and we had already been, I had been a vegetarian, um, on and off for like, oh, since I was a kid. So I never felt totally right about eating meat, but I just thought I needed to for health reasons, um, being anemic and, um, a few other things. So, um, when I saw the movie, I think it was Cowspiracy first and then What the Health, those were big openers to see that maybe um, maybe it wasn't so healthy for us. And that was the sort of what tipped us over to do a challenge. And so I think that was a really good place to start because it wasn't as overwhelming as just changing your whole life. Mm. Um, like anyone can do anything for, you know, 30 days. And having the support, like, so whether it's um, you're doing it with a friend or a partner, um, that really helped. So we had each other to hold accountable. And um, it helped that I was... It difficult, huh, to transition sometimes. Yeah. And we were bringing over my three-year-old daughter at the time. So I had a newborn baby who I had just learned was also dairy intolerant because through my breast milk, she was having diarrhea every time I had dairy. So that was a great, um, that was like a blessing. Like that sort of helped me stop dairy, which was probably the hardest thing to stop. A lot of people say they would be vegan, but cheese. And so when I sort of eliminated that already, um, and then, uh, taking our, our three-year-old was, was a little bit of a challenge because, you know, as a three-year-old, she was used to eating, we were eating everything. We were eating hot dogs and, and everything, you know, all the crap. And, um, yeah, so it was a big, like, I, I was a little nervous how she was going to, cause she was already a picky eater and how she was going to, um, be able to get enough food in her as a vegan, but we started there and I started as a challenge and every day I, we looked up a yummy, um, recipe cause there's so many online and we just basically started transitioning with our favorite foods, but how to veganize them. So, yeah, it was like the place we started was we weren't really um, we it was at the beginning and most people start this way is just with meat alternatives. And so like you were saying, like the McDonald's Beyond Burger or whatever that's coming out, like I I don't condone McDonald's at all. But um, a lot of the time it's you just um, you don't want to change your entire life. But there's now alternatives available to sort of ease that transition. It is the easiest time in the world right now, isn't it? I mean, there's veggie burgers, there's yeah. fake chicken, there's uh, even, you know, fake fish for people that like the, <laughs> like that yeah. taste. Um, yeah, so we were able to use these, like, alternatives to replace, and we used uh, ground round instead of ground beef for, you know, shepherd's pie and stuff. And we did that for the first 30 days, and already in that first 30 days, we did feel so much better, even though we weren't eating completely super healthy, but I was making sure that we were given my, uh, anemia. I had to make sure. So like everyone should do, you know, know their deficiencies and there's a plant alternative for everything. So like I, I ate a lot more lentils and, um, stuff that was richer in iron, like dark leafy greens and stuff like that. So I felt like actually in the first 30 days, even though I wasn't, um, like we were, you know, eating a lot of junk still, I was feeling the effects right away. Like I felt, healthier and uh my husband did too so we just kind of kept going that's that is great and you know it's great to hear the whole family is involved because it's something you don't hear a lot about you know we sort of the idea of the vegan is this like rabid you know (laughs) isolated sort of angry person but i actually found most vegans that i know are very calm and relaxed and it is a very you know a uh, healthy aspect and, and that's one thing I wanted to also talk about even before we go into individual changes is the family you know I was talking to Dr. Clapper last week about the fact that we have enough information to know that meat and dairy can be dangerous whether it's the amount of cholesterol or the amount of fats or some people have um, allergies to them but and we do know that the you know vegan diet is healthy 
you know, but at the same time, do you think it's a social stigma or why haven't we applied what we know as adults more to children, um, you know, as, as far as raising kids goes, most people don't think about doing that vegan. And I know there's a couple of vegan parents out there on, on the chat right now. Yeah. Too. Well, definitely our doctor was against it, actually, and she was quite mm. progressive woman. Um, but it's just what they're taught. And so a lot of the time, like the dairy and the meat industry do actually um, – our sponsor, like we've learned as in what the health, how much they're behind our university education and government choices. So it's not their fault, but they're not taught nutrition and they're not taught about gut health, which I heard Dr. Clapper mention. Um, a lot of things that are kind of coming out now, like what you said, how you said that um, we were taught that um, the pesticides and all the sprays that they were using were safe. Like we just, we, that's what, um, we, that's what even the farmers were taught. So it's, yeah. it's, yeah, it's true. It, and you know, it, it, I mean, you bring it up, the, uh, meat and dairy industry is the largest industry in the United States. So their lobbying power is incredible. I mean, this was the lobbying group that got Oprah to cease, desist, apologize, retract, you know, uh, and that was one of our the first times that we saw the kind of the, the freedom of how to speak disappear. And I think that that's what a lot of uh, vegans also fight for is is information, which brings me to, you know, you have to really, oh, my gosh, you have to really reeducate yourself on how to eat, because if you just stop eating meat, you're going to lose some of the things that our diets have become accustomed to obtaining through mm -hmm. meat. And we have to find them mm -hmm. in other ways. Um, mm -hmm. So to start with some of the myths and questions and I know you're going to be familiar with this one. Everyone first asked me, and I think it's a very legitimate question because we're all taught that protein is the most important thing. Mm. But the number one question I get is, well, well, where, where am I going to get my protein or how do I get protein? What do I do? Um, so why, could you first address sort of that protein misconception? Sure. And like, there's so much information coming out about this now. So anyone is interested could really like research themselves now. Um, there, so we don't need as much protein as we were led to believe, and we do get all our protein necessary from plants. So um, from nuts, legumes, dark leafy greens, um, even fruit. So we're getting, there is protein. I just did a fruit, um, like a complete organic fruit cleanse, and I know people who have done it for way longer, and they're getting, they're actually still exercising and so I, I do take aminos every day, which is a plant pre-digested uh, plant-based protein, which doesn't affect your kidneys and your liver. It goes right into your system. And I recommend that if you are like, you know, if you're working out, there's so many amazing um, enriched uh, options. Like I really recommend aminos as a vegan. Um, but um, we have a problem right now with too much uh, protein, actually. So mm. we see a lot in the hospitals of people suffering from things like um, uric acid buildup and just things from caused by too much animal protein, actually, in our system. Um, so I would say to those people that, um, yeah, we don't need as much as we think we need. Mm. And there's so many sources in plants. Now, I was going to say, Lentil, say yeah. somebody is going to go to the grocery store for the first time and say, you know what, I'm not going to get a burger or steak this time. What would be your top, say, your top two things you'd recommend that they eat to uh, to replace some of the protein they're worried about losing? Okay. So, like, for instance, because um, a lot of the time it's, like, comfort. We just want that, like, warm um, and nostalgic comfort food. So, um, it did take a while to stop kind of craving those things. So uh, initially you will start craving, you know, the creature comforts. Um, and in those times, uh, at the beginning I would buy, um, so, you know, we would buy ground round if I wanted a like hearty spaghetti sauce, a meaty spaghetti sauce. Um, and then, or shepherd's pie or anything where you would be having, uh, like ground beef is, 
ground round is a great substitute. It's about the same price. Um, and, um, then I started transitioning more now to beans. So like, instead of using the soy based proteins, I'm actually using lentils and black beans a lot more okay. and doing the same things. Yeah. And it's like all about, you kind of have to retrain your, uh, body to start to crave those things because that will happen over time and don't not to get discouraged because the first few times I was, if I smelled like a barbecue, I don't know, you know, whatever it was, there's something that triggers that, um, you know, we can't help, but things that are salty and fatty are going to be, you know, delicious, like to our palate and they're designed to be delicious. It doesn't taste good raw, but when it's crispy and salty, so you can do that. Like I, you know, I bake my tofu in soy sauce and it's like crispy around the outside. And, um, and then I put it sometimes in like, you know, different, in different ways, either in the salad or in stew. But I find now just getting that fix of like a crispy, salty thing. And, um, I find it in shiitake based meat products. So if you're avoiding soy, there's shiitake is a little bit more expensive, but for, you know, specialty it's, it's, it's available on the market and it's really good for impressing guests who are not vegan and stuff. So I have people who are like, this can't be vegan, you know, cause it has that same chew that people really right. <laughs> like you want to get that sometimes. Um, so my top two things, like if I'm going to really, if I'm really craving something really comfort, um, uh, yeah, like, um, so, cause I'm getting, I'm, I'm pretty much raw now. So it's, it's, I'm, oh, I'm yeah, hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny to think of, um, I've changed a lot and, and veganism is like a gateway to health optimal, like to optimal health really. So you start with just replacing the meats and then you kind of, you see it's like over time, the way you feel when you're eating vegan, I don't even hardly call it vegan anymore. I call it kind of kind living because when you're eating consciously, um, you start to be more aware of everything you put in your body and how that makes you feel. And, um, so through the three years I've kind of, I started as kind of a junk food vegan and just wanted to replace all those creature comforts, right. <laughs> but now have kind of gone down the wormhole to optimal health and longevity and those kind of things that are, um, it's really interesting once you, yeah, it, it does. It, it grows and grows. You know, I just did it. It's first never ending. Because of my, yeah. You know, the tumors that kept growing back and then that was my big concern. I thought, you know, there's got to be so many chemicals or whatever, you know, that's in there. And then you do, you start to think a little differently and you start to feel more in harmony, you know, at least for me. Um, and then I was able Definitely. to really find, you know, my, uh, my thing from there. Um, now, yeah. you, you know, now you talk about beans, which is another great aspect. There's a lot of people and uh, Barbara brought this up earlier that you know, and it's something that I struggle with. It definitely as a conservationist, there's not a whole lot of, of money in this. So I am very much a poor vegan. Um, you know, I'm looking at it's a mostly raw diet uh, is what I eat. Yeah. I mean, aside for also for cancer reasons, but yeah, you know, it's, it's very healthy. And it's also kind of the only thing that I could get around the world, you know, that was there. But how, let's say somebody wants to transfer over, but they are worried about the cost. What kind of low cost mm -hmm. ideas? do you have mm. or advice that you have um, for us to, to kind of get headed in that direction? Okay. So I, I actually I put together like 10 meals that are under $10. So I'm going to be sharing it with, uh, I'll share it under this link. And then I can also, if anyone of your audience or my audience wants to get a list of 10 tried, tested and true family approved meals for a family of four, that's what I'm basing it on. Um, and they were all, they were all worked out to under $10. So yeah, a lot of them involved, um, like beans are really cheap, like under a dollar a can. Um, and, um, you know, different, uh, well pastas. And then if you're going directly, like getting your produce from a local farm, if you can get a hookup, if you can, um, a, like, you know, get to know a local farm, it helps a lot. You get like big you get just like a lot more quantity of organic produce and, um, and it's a lot cheaper than in third part. Like once it's in a grocery store, there's a lot of problems with the grocery store. It's one that, um, so as a vegan, I'm also, I'm vegan for ethical reasons as, as you are too, besides health, it's also ethics. So, 
Um, a lot of produce isn't ethical in grocery stores. They're, you know, shipped from around the world and grown with pesticides. So I try to get everything from local farms as much as possible. Um, I even partnered with one that's in California where I, I love it because it's um, everything is compostable packaging. And you spoke about nice. your plastic challenge, which I'm going to join in with you as well. Fantastic. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Good. And, and there's ways. So like I find buying produce like that, it's not wrapped in plastic. Um, and so there's a lot of ways that as you're um, like, you know, um, I'm going to, I, I, my, right now I, I don't have off the top of my yeah. head. Um, but you know, pasta is cheap. Um, tofu is cheap. Um, you know, I buy organic tofu because it does matter. Um, and it's not much more expensive. So maybe you're looking at like maybe a, a dollar more at most, but, um, it's worth it. Um, and, uh, just eating, yeah, like grains are cheap buckwheat is so full of so many essential nutrients and you find ways of making barley and buckwheat and things that are like really inexpensive and so nutrient dense. Wow. Those are, I love those. Those are so good. And quinoa, uh, such a yeah. fantastic thick, you know, um, and I was amazed because exactly. when I was down in Peru and we were in the Amazon, you know, everybody down there is a little bit more in touch with understanding the nature connection to everything we have inside of our, our stores. Yeah. And one thing that's a, obviously, I mean, it's grown down there, but quinoa is something that is just part of kind of an everyday meal. And it's yeah. funny because out here we all think like superfoods and, you know, we're talking about like different roots from the Amazon, but out there they just incorporate it as their diet. And, uh, yeah. you know, and, and you find that, yeah. yeah, once, once you start to do that, you see it totally differently. You know, um, yeah, and another thing from Peru is amaranth, which is oh, also yeah. very, very nutrient dense and really inexpensive. So a lot of grain you could buy in bulk, so you don't have to worry about um, as much packaging. If you buy it in big quantities, mm -hmm. and it lasts forever in the pantry, pretty much. So it's like we all, we're stocked with grains and legumes and stuff like that, like on hand. So they don't go like you know. It, um, chickpeas, I buy them dry as opposed to canned because actually they last, it does take more preparation time, but it's less packaging and they last so much longer and way cheaper. So different ways that you can find getting things in bigger quantities that last a really long time. And I was going to say too, when you're shopping this way, it gives you more control over your packaging, you know, or you mm -hmm. can, yeah, you can get what you, you know, take in your own bags or take in, you know, people always think I'm nuts when I go through the produce thing because I don't use their bags and I'm just putting the tomato yeah. and the whatever inside of there, you know, and the, how can you touch the, the metal of the you know, thing? But, I know. you know, you're yeah. going to wash it off anyway. Um, but yeah, yeah, to, exactly. You know, and that, and that really is the best thing that we can do is to remember, you know, and, and we, last week we talked about vegan sustainability and I like that that's part of what your family also practices. Because, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of uh, vegans that I know don't think in that aspect. And I think it's important for us as a mm -hmm. movement to, yep. you know, to, to make sure that we rise up a little bit more and demand that yep. a little bit more. Um, like you talked about compostable products and, you know, yep. it's, it's... Absolutely. And it all goes, it all is together. Like, yeah. if we, there's no point to heal ourselves if we're not going to be also um, healing the planet and cause we don't want to be healthy living on a sick planet. So yeah. it's, and then also creates like what I think you said something about, you know, when you heal yourself, um, then you want to help others as well. And together when you're all, when we can heal and in collective, um, you know, collectively, then we all want to just collectively do what's best for the planet. So, yeah. um, it kind of comes, it all is very organic how that, how that happens. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. And then, you know, you really bring up a good point. It really is an all inclusive. And I like that your husband did it with you. And I like that your kids are practicing it as well because they're growing up in a mindful fashion. And I saw you guys yep. with the, the climate protests and I know you guys are very active. And, and I think that it's so important because, you know, the way we grew up, and no discredit to our parents, but the information wasn't quite out there. I mean, there was maybe one that one 
kind of weird neighbor that would give you the you know the apple for halloween or whatever yeah but that was back then that was the, the exception now yeah. more people are thinking more consciously and it's been very cool to see this changeover and you know with the discussion about climate change it brings in the discussion of having to change how we're doing agriculture whether it's mm -hmm. meat production or vegetable production mm -hmm. and both of them yep. are creating you know worlds of, of issues for us so i think yep. that you know we you know but the best thing that we can do is like we were talking about earlier you can make your choice with your vote with your wallet with your dollar mm -hmm. you know while you're yep. at the store and that's why the you know your your recipes that we're going to put up the 10 different recipes for under ten dollars so that and that feeds four people so for me i'm i'm mm -hmm. alone so if i made it i would be able to eat for a few days which is also extremely yep. cost effective and the best thing yep. about vegan food is it doesn't go bad most longer. of the time i find yeah. it it gets more seasoned over time and yeah you know your third day into a soup you're like whoa what is this it's mm -hmm. so good um, amazing yeah yeah and our you know our food doesn't rot uh, in the same yeah way so <laughs> yeah know, it's we, not as dangerous and um <laughs> yeah. yeah for sure it's um like soups are a great thing to make that last like days and you know i like to make things in like a big quantity especially in the winter time it's nice it gets better with age for sure so, um yeah. uh, now bruce said he can't wait for the recipes bruce it, bruce was a vegetarian and after our discussion with dr clapper decided to try to oh, take amazing. that final leap so um, and bruce has been posting all this amazing food he's been making and he's been putting a lot of work into it and really working on that transition so bruce if you have any questions for allison i want to put this out there too if anyone has questions right now for allison we're also going to put a link so you can go and ask her more questions when we're done with the show you can discuss more private issues um, you know private health issues you want because all of us have health effects and health things we have to be conscious of especially yeah. if we're going to transition our diets so it's yeah. really important to, i want to yeah Sorry, I, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, 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 please. I was just going to say, I want to keep, uh, so I want to help people transition the right way because the worst thing for the movement is um, people who it doesn't, they, they don't, they don't feel good on a vegan diet and then they end up going back or for vegans already existing, I want to help them thrive yeah. because we are the representation to the world and it's so important that, um, you know, we're optimal. So I have, yeah, if anyone has, like, I have the way to get B12. I have the way to get um, your kids to make sure that they're eating properly and uh, a way to also help gut health, which is so important as a foundation. And the same way that, like, in the meat industry, there's antibiotics in a lot of the meat that's destroyed our, so the antibiotics that we eat um, or the chemicals in the food, in the, um, the pesticides and stuff are all destroying our gut. So a lot of the people, a lot of people find they feel very low energy on vegan and it's actually because they're not absorbing the nutrients effect, um, effectively. So gut health is what I work with a lot of people on, um, and getting B12 and stuff. So see, and that's, that, that's actually, that's something I'm going to ask you about as more well, as well off the show, because gut health is something I'm just starting to learn about. It actually would be a mm -hmm. great topic we could do on another podcast as well, because that's something yeah. that's very invisible. Um, some of my friends are very, you know, they, they try to take kombucha or other type of ways to get some probiotics or try to help with mm -hmm. their gut health. Um, but I would love to definitely, you know, more about that. Um, but we do have a question up here now. Uh, Mitch is also joining us. Mitch has done another version where he has replaced one meal a day with something mm -hmm. that's vegan. So he's now eating oatmeal and he's dropped a bunch of weight. He's got more energy, feels Great. good. And I love hearing these stories. Um, I mean, it must be the best job in the world for you to where you see people get happier and get healthier. And, you know, yes. um, this is absolutely uh, Mitch says he has a gut and needs help. <laughs> he's got a good uh, sense of humor always. Uh, Mitch is actually a big water advocate, big activist down in Florida and has brought a lot Great. of things to attention. So, and I always find that those are very um, combined also, you know, very health oriented people tend to be conservationists. Um, and, Absolutely. you know, there is a division over between vegans and, and non-vegans mm -hmm. within conservation. But my personal opinion is that 
it, I'm glad we have you know both sides there, and it, it allows us to have more discussions and try to find better ways forward, no matter how we can do this. Um, now, two questions that have popped up. Michelle has the question about rice. Uh, what mm -hmm. if, if you're going to get rice because it's a good filler and it's a nice thing, and people know rice and beans. Is there a healthy Cheap. rice or is there yeah. rice to avoid? Yeah, well, I buy, so I get um, wild, organic uh, ri uh, rice. Um, I like the texture and the taste of it better now, too. It's really delicious in, a, like, a cold salad even, you know, with um, cranberries and nuts and stuff like, and some herbs in there. Um, I make it, uh, I'm not a huge rice fan, but um, if I'm making, um, you know, Asian-style food, I'll use, I try to get, um, I'll try to get brown rice as like, you know, but you know, I also love, uh, there's amazing vegan sushi out there now and I, I eat that. So I'm not super always careful, but when I buy it for our family, we buy, we do tend to buy a uh, wild, wow. I like the wild uh, rice the best. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's good to know because that is a question I also had because I was just eating regular rice um, and it, I thought this just can't be, <laughs> you know, uh, getting well, it's, it's feeling yeah. healthier. So. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's not the best. Like it's definitely um, a lot of the time it's, it's just, well, it's constipating and um, it's not super, the brown rice or the wild rice has more nutrients. So, yeah. Perfect. Oh, <laughs> you, you, we have visiting here. <laughs> yeah see. so my my daughter by the way <laughs> it's really much easier than people think to get your kids to go vegan because mm -hmm. kids really understand this stuff like if they understand kindness it's natural and yeah. when my daughter learned about like where hot dogs were coming from I didn't have to ever tell her people are always saying I don't want to like have to limit my kids or tell them something is taboo and I never did that. So what I did was I just I, I showed her a video of how hot dogs are made because I mean it's available now. We can show them this stuff, and um, and I for her it was just I never had to tell her again. Don't eat a hot dog. I mean it's just something that yeah. she avoids eating because she knows what's in it and it doesn't. Uh, that's that doesn't uh, appeal to her anymore. So really good right. to be open with your kids about the process of. Mm -hmm. uh, how food is raised and you realize you don't have to do as much policing. It, it really comes naturally to kids. That, and that makes perfect sense because they're in tune with thinking about everything around them. Whereas a lot of adults have sort of found ways Been brainwashed. To, yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, I yeah, think a lot of times actually, yeah, the first person who actually sort of awoke me to vegan movement who made it seem really normal, actually, and this is before I was ready to go vegan myself, because for years I was like supporting the vegan movement, but not ready myself. But it was Jonathan Safran Foer, who taught, I don't know if you're uh, familiar with no, I'm not, him. I don't know. Okay, so he, he wrote the book, um, Eating Animals, mm -hmm. and also another book that was made into a movie. So um it's he he's a really really intelligent rational like human and i love how he speaks about it and he thinks and this is years ago before kind of this big vegan movement exploded mm -hmm. but he was saying that um it's it, it's just more ethical to feed your kids a vegan diet and let them choose because the, a lot of the question was is it ethical to sort of limit what they eat and his mm -hmm thing was it's way more ethical to have raise them vegan and if they want to when they come of age to start eating animals that's their decision but we shouldn't impose that on them from a young age i love that, that that's that's the reverse of the standard sort of view you know and it makes sense yeah. because as we learn more you know we need to adapt i mean we lost the food triangle <laughs> i know they replaced yeah. it with some other abomination that's probably just lobbyist driven but you know, as kids, we were told, like, if you eat meat and bread, you know, like, you're going to be fine. Um, yeah. And that was, our, and then the, remember the veggies were like at the bottom corner. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. And, I'm really, I'm glad yeah. that in Canada, I don't know about the U.S. one, oh, but man. in Canada, they pretty much got rid of dairy. It's like non-existent. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. fantastic. No, we, we have way too strong, I think, of a lobby down here to, yeah. to kind of see that, you know, type of change. Um, but yeah, and that's, and, and so I wanted to ask too, now for a lot of people that are watching, that are wondering, you know, now that your kids have been vegan for a while, how is their health? Oh, amazing. So we start, so, 
Um, yeah, so it's just been getting better and better as we become, like I said, it's like one, the rabbit hole. We're just getting healthier and healthier. And it's been now a, almost a full year. So since last October, they have not been sick once, wow. which is crazy because they're surrounded at their daycares with all these runny nose kids. Mm -hmm. Um, my daughter who was raised, it's, 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 yeah, it's just incredible to see. I'm not even worried about them hanging around with sick kids anymore. Um, because they're not, they're, their immune system is so strong and I give them pre and probiotics every morning. That's part of, um, what I, I do think that that's part of, um, something we changed in their diet a year ago, as well as, uh, drinking green juice every day, um, and drinking tart cherry juice at night, which is, um, also all organic and really super nutrient dense and high vitamin C and all those things. So, I make sure to give them, and it's like they know they're taking their medicine, so they take a, a spoonful of tart cherry juice, um, and that's their medicine every night, and it also helps produce melatonin, so it helps them sleep better, which is also part of what, like, why their health is so good, but eating junk more. Um, teachers, I was, and I was told this when I was a young kid that I had ADD and stuff, so teachers were already saying the same things that I was, I would, uh, my parents heard, which mm. is that she wasn't focusing, she didn't have high energy. And all these things. And actually, since we started um, really getting into nutrition and optimal nutrition, um, they have been, the teacher noticed the difference from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. And um, she's actually right, right. next to me. Um, oh, but she's, hi. Um, Look at that. <laughs> she's so yeah, but uh. thanks. Um, but it's amazing that their health, like seeing all these kids sick all the time. Hi. Um, <laughs> she can hear you because the headphones. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Hi. Um, so, uh, yeah, like <laughs> it's been, it's been, uh, I see the difference amongst their peers who are always sick. It seems like, especially in Montreal where it's cold here now, it's starting to get cold. Everyone has colds around us and it's just, if they, if we do feel something coming on, we feel like, I mean, I have the cures for it in, in nature. So. Um, we haven't had anything full blown happen in over a, in almost a, exactly a year today. So we're going to be celebrating. That's been a year. We haven't been sick at all. So that's great. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I've never, I've never heard that with kids. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. Fantastic. It's, mm -hmm. it's not part of life. It doesn't have to be. And so many people accept things like, um, like the things that we cured with our vegan diet were things that I thought were just, I had accepted. Like we cured eczema, um, IBS, my husband has allergies. Um, wow. his asthma and all those were, were they managed oh, or were they reversed sorry, my, my with uh, changing to a vegan diet? Um, it was, sorry, repeat. Uh, was, were those all reversed or are they just more manageable now with the vegan diet? Um, well, my eczema is completely gone. My husband has no more allergies. He's like, and he was really, he couldn't go over to my parents' house because of the dogs. He does not have a problem anymore. Mm -hmm. So these things are, and he doesn't have to take his asthma pump at all anymore. He hasn't had one in over a year. So these things are, we don't think they're coming back. And I mean, it's just continuing to get better and better. So a lot of the things that we've healed are just what people accept as just part of life. And we don't think that like, you know, allergies, we think if we're born with them, that's just life. But it's amazing that there's so many things that are brought on by, um, by, by nutrition and yeah. Things that we don't necessarily connect, uh, to it, you know, and we are starting to see that kind of the rethinking now, which I think is, is very important. I mean, I, for me, I used to get sick every spring. I don't know why. Um, mm -hmm. But then mm -hmm. when I stopped and I changed the way that I eat now, maybe I'll get run down a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's only for a few days generally and a little bit of sleep yeah. and everything's fine. And it's and, it's, and yeah. I used to have allergies. Uh, I grew up in Maryland and the East Coast and lots and lots of pollen. And, uh, yeah. you know, and I just would, yeah, I'd have hay fever and I was, you know, um, but and now it's all gone, <laughs> you know, it's, and it's wow. incredible and it's all because, you know, you're letting your body do what, what its thing is. And, you know, for me, mm -hmm. it's improved my immune system so much that my tumors that grew very aggressively now haven't really, they've been growing at a very slow pace. So it's enabled me what normally Amazing. would be a, a year has been now four years of, of growth to get to the same spot. So amazing yeah, have you seen the movie heal on netflix there's a movie heal and she 
Oh, it's really good. I really recommend it. Yeah. Okay. That sounds great. It's just yeah, incredible what good. we're, we're capable of. We're not taught mm -hmm. that we have all the abilities to heal our, in our body. And if we just let it, like you said, do its thing and provide it with, um, so I even started doing more fasting and things mm -hmm. like that, which, um, it's incredible what we're able, like our bodies are just, they just want to heal. Like our bodies know how to be correct. We're just things in our bodies. It just really knows how to heal. So I love it. And it makes perfect sense. You know, we, it's, it's just all natural, you know, and it's yep. oh, now, okay. When, when you're helping people that are transitioning over, what do you find to be the biggest block for them or what's kind mm -hmm. of the biggest, some stumbling block people have? Okay. Um, family. So social, mm. social, um, situations. Um, that's a really hard one for most people. Everyone is, like you said, we were all raised a certain way and it's really hard to, um, if you don't have a community, a vegan community, which most people don't, we have it online maybe, but in our reg in our, um, in real life, we don't have it. And that could be a really big challenge. So, um, I definitely, I, I understand that challenge because it's what prevented me from going vegan a lot sooner. Also, uh, helped, like it, it kept me coming, even when I wanted to be vegetarian when I was younger, um, family and social situations and holidays and these things are, you know, they keep coming up and it's very constant in our lives and no one wants to really be confrontational or the outsider. Um, so it's a lot easier sometimes to give in. But um, I would say I've learned this time to really, uh, and it's a it's it's all a work in prog pro it's all a work in progress. So um, as I've gone through this journey, I've learned new ways of you know maybe making a dish. So tonight it's uh, Rosh Hashanah for like for uh, you know I grew up Jewish, but um, we're celebrating. I'm making a vegan dish to bring to the the dinner tonight, and it's just oh, that's great. Yeah, I, mean, I was so raised I think, Jewish, and I know my family wouldn't. You know, they they it's it's great that they're open and receptive to trying that out on the holiday. That's great. Yeah, they've been. It's and it's been three years that we've been vegan, so it's nice. not easy. And I still do have the um, come up against with you know my parents, and it's very hard. Like a lot of people who are still living with their parents, um, or are have a spouse that's completely like not there yet. That. I think to me is the biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. And, and then I think that the best way is to be patient with people because I used to get really aggressive and that would push people further away from it. So now I don't even call it vegan cooking. I call it kind possible. So meat to me isn't kind because killing animals isn't kind. So that doesn't fall in the, in my kind category. So, and it's not excluding anyone. It's inclusive more because anyone can make decisions to be kinder. And I think ultimately we all do want to be kinder. Just people don't, aren't aware of what the process is, how they're getting their food and how it's made. So, um, out of sight, out of mind, but I try to bring awareness and, um, have people, um, instead of pushing them away with, um, force, I try to, um, just engage with them and make it, make it pleasant and, and try to just keep it positive. And that's such a, that's such an important thing. And I, and I love that you do that because that's one big thing is that a lot of times people are very uh, kind of in the zeitgeist or get excited and then they become confrontational and then we end up building all these walls. And yeah. I think, you know, what one of the things for me that's the driving force is the compassion and the kindness. And you have to, share that empathy and that understanding not only with all the animals but with all the people that you deal with and yeah, you know absolutely. people have physical challenges they have to do they have social you know challenges um and and it can be very complex but in the end they all just want to find a, a healthy way to live in harmony mm -hmm. with the world around yeah. them and you know and i i think it's important that we Exactly. That we keep that line of dialogue open, which is, um, mm -hmm. you know, I like that you do that because, you know, a lot of times people will say, well, you know, the vegans are a little and, you know, and I even for a while, it's, it's such a diverse mix of people. And it's funny because you'll see a post where somebody is vegan and they're pro-life and they don't understand how can somebody be vegan and pro-choice. And then you have the mm -hmm. same opposite view. So you find that the vegan belief of the vegan uh, desire 
still falls into so many widespread categories that it's an interesting thing as long as we keep these bridges open we can bring people from all different types of walks of life it's not just one Absolutely. perspective yeah. yeah and so many people i know would like block someone for being you know um for not having the same views but i think it's so important to have yeah. on our friend lists and on like as many people um exposed to this information as possible and like with podcasts like yours you're like reaching so many people who aren't necessarily just vegan. So I like to, I don't want to isolate myself with just yeah. vegan. I try to be as much involved with, um, other, you know, in the real world as possible. So, yes. and that's, I love that because that's so important because we need, you know, we're, we're sort of more goodwill <laughs> style ambassadors. And, you know, I mean, I understand there's vegans that get passionate. There's people that you know um, are passionate on the other side but it does become divisive and i think the goal is unity yeah. because the more we are unified yes. the bigger change we can make and you know uh, it's great i was just so looking at um <clears throat> karen says hi from new zealand I, I love this too because we get people from all around the world uh i was just it's amazing looking at, uh, andrea is from romania and they have, I believe it's for, it's within the religion, but you go uh, without animal products as part of mm -hmm. your routine. So she says, my mother and I became vegetarian at the same time. We are trying to slowly move to mm. vegan. Makes much more easier to be the two of us because they have that connection yes. together. She said, we love nature and animals. So we should try to love each other as humans as well. And, um, yep. you know, and I think that, you know, that there is that sense of harmony and mindfulness. Um, Bruce used the word mindfulness on, on a previous mm -hmm. podcast, and I've really just held on to that because I, I love that idea. Um, what, so what, what I wanted to say is let's say that we we'll just forget about the concept of vegan and, the, and all the terminology and everything. But if somebody's sitting there and saying, I just want to do one thing today mm -hmm. to make a one step towards becoming mm -hmm. a healthier person um, what would be maybe one just very simple piece of advice you could give people i know it's hard because everyone's um, different <laughs> yeah well i would say so um make sure that you are um really making sure that you, so there's some information out there with gut health, but I would say start with gut health. Gut health. That's a really good, great place to start. Start with also what you, the first thing you put in your body. So, um, like for me, I, it was, it, it's been when it, I put green juice, organic green juice in my body, the first thing in the morning. And I find that sets my foundation for the rest of the day. Because if you put like, um, you know, a muffin in your body, the first thing in the morning, um, that's going to spike your sugar levels and then you're going to be craving junk food all day and um, all of these things, you're getting carbs and it's just going to fill, it's it's going to expand your stomach and all this stuff. So I, I like to start right in the morning and that I find sets the pace. You just, once you start right, you don't want to put crap in your body. You feel great and um, it also, um, I, yeah, so that that was a big Thing for health for health wise for me was getting all of my b12 my magnesium my um calcium actually in there too and all these things first thing in the morning you're flooding your cells with mm. um all the nutrients that it needs and you just don't have bad cravings throughout the day that's amazing i love that i love knowing that um i didn't know that it makes perfect sense that how you start your body's you know, it, it was like Dr. Clapper was saying that your your genes will change each day with yeah. what you eat. And your idea mm -hmm. of, so guys, that was I think that was an incredible piece of advice. You start your day on a healthy note. You start flooding your body with some good nutrient, you know, things. Um, now, of course, I love pineapple, blueberries and everything else. But yeah, in the morning, I wanted an unnatural sugar spike of you know, this kind of, um, you know, breakfast sandwich or other things all been replaced now by oatmeal. Um, yeah. Great. Oatmeal is a great place to start too. So like, mm -hmm. I just think, yeah, having a really 
and, and not as much. Imp so I like to push my um, breakfast actually a little bit later than normal. Like, so every, you know, I, I started intermittent fasting, which also really helped with, uh, you get that little fast in between eat and you let your body recover and heal. Um, and so like giving yourself maybe from dinner time, like if you eat an early dinner all the way to maybe trying to prolong breakfast, maybe just an hour, it really does help just to give your body that, uh, empty, like time to just heal itself. That's, and that, that is very important because, you know, we live in sort of this consumer mentality that we just need to yeah. bring it in, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. But sometimes the body already has what it needs. And it needs some time to work with it and process it. You know, it's our yeah, our work and not giving into every craving. Like another thing is, mm -hmm. um, uh, we're so addicted to food. We are all like it's the biggest addiction is is food, and it's marketed constantly to us. So it's no wonder we're constantly craving things. So I like to do like having taking control back and little things like that. Like so, I'll um, you know make sure to really. And in Montreal in the winter, it's going to be harder, but really, you know, allow sunlight on our skin every day and mindfulness and breathing and meditation and things that, you know, we can pause. And when we're having an unhealthy craving, we can control that, which is part of also just like healing ourselves is learning that we have control over our thoughts. We have control over what we put in our bodies. We're not just these like insatiable victims of our society like we have to you know be more mindful and conscious about everything so little ways of like free you know yeah like it's just kind of you know allowing sunlight on our skin if we're feeling like a craving just kind of taking that moment to expose ourselves because maybe it's also lack of vitamins that we can actually be getting from the sun for free and um doing long breathing uh through the nose just to calm our nervous system and we will, you know, overcome some cravings and then actually it becomes really rewarding when we realize we have more control. So it's a cycle of that. Just See, and I like that because that all starts with the one thing that we tend to have taken out of us over time is being kind to ourselves and mm -hmm. giving yourself a couple minutes to sit and relax. Um, I personally have uh, been enjoying yoga and meditation. Great. Uh, it's very amazingly difficult in our society to find mm -hmm. ways to focus and calm your mind. Um, and once you start to do and you start to have time with yourself, it's an amazing, mm -hmm. you're rebuilding your own foundation. And that's what was great about today's topic is that, you know, we have to remember that although we're always looking at other things we want to try to, to help and save, that we do take care of us. We give ourselves yeah. time, we make ourselves happy, we feed our machine healthy food that works as medicine, um, mm -hmm. you know, or at least Absolutely. we find a, a way to improve you know, what, what we have, and we don't let them run us around. And I think with conservationists, we tend to find that, and with vegans too, we, we tend to really find people good and is kind, is, it, it makes perfect sense, because once that is inside, that is what you put right back out. Exactly. We feel the energy. Once we're lit, when we're more conscious, we actually feel the energy of food. And when you're eating, like you said, the blueberry from the local organic farm versus the energy of the one from the grocery store, that translates to a very different energy in our bodies. So we are, it really makes a big difference um, where we source our things, that they're from kind um, sources. And, um, and it is possible now for like for everyone, like I, I actually do have a link, which I'll, I'll send because this, this farm that I partnered with actually is like the most I've visited it it's in California and it's the most ethical kind, um, like from the owners down to everyone who works there. It's like, you could feel the energy of the food because oh, nice. it's, it's grown kindly and, um, it's, it's accessible to everyone. The price is great. And I have, uh, actually some gift cards I can give to your audience. So, um, oh, I can, yeah, I have $50 off. So until actually November, I have unlimited $50 off. So, wow. yeah. I, I, I hope everybody heard that. That's incredible. Uh, after we're done with the show, just go ahead and yeah, throw the link down there for us on the Facebook post. I'll make sure it goes on the YouTube post. And everyone, Allison is offering to help out and give us a really nice, ethical, organic 
and as well as a huge discount, which yeah. is a great way to get started and a great way to kind of move yourself over to that. And, you know, you talk about the 30 day challenge and I think that's something else is, you know, you replace that one meal a day, you replace that one thing a day, you give yourself 20 minutes a day, whatever you do, when you get into yeah. that 30 days, you, your energy, whole energy changes. You know, I, people are always uh, wondering why I'm not more upset about things and, yeah. <laughs> you know, why you walk around smiling and happy all the time. And, you know, a lot of it has to do with being kind to yourself and having so that energy much. as your foundation. And, so much. I, and I, so, so much. Like, um, definitely the, um, you know, it, it helps your mental state um, and really like when you're loving, when you're giving yourself love, when you're putting good things, like it, it comes out that way. It just, you know, so some people, it bothers them a little bit. They're like, <laughs> I can see, you know, some people who are like living in victimhood and they're very upset sure. and they're angry. It's very hard to see someone who's just you know, happy, but it's available to anyone if they just allow it in their, like, if you really open your heart and you just want to do, if you treat yourself right, you're helping make the world a better place. So like you said at the beginning with the Buddhist, um, like you want to make the world, you want to leave every room, uh, you want to leave the world better than when you entered. Um, yeah, so I love that expression. It's like in tikkun olam. I don't know if you know in uh, mm. Hebrew is the sim similar thing. And it's no, just no. about, yeah, so tikkun olam means leaving every room uh, nicer than when you entered. Mm. And it's just about how we, like how it's such a selfless thing to treat your body well and to treat yourself well. It's really helping to make the world a better place. Ah, I love that. And it's amazing to also know that it's something that's been known in cultures around all over. I think there's an expression in every culture and it's a, mm -hmm. it's the most important one. And I think it's like a really unused, like forgotten one. So, um, yeah, it's, I love that you brought that it. up and it's, <laughs> it's so important. We should live, we should definitely all live that way. Like the, you know, this earth is our rent to the earth should be caring for it. And, um, that's it's 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 so beneficial it's not self it's it's completely it's a win-win right like <laughs> exactly so it's yeah it's true it makes us more unified as people and it brings yeah. us closer into the environment that we live in which for a long time it seems that we all thought we were sort of separate you know everybody would you know the stories in the movies always took place in buildings rooms mm -hmm conference centers, well, you know, whatever, and never yep. in, in, in nature. And if people were in nature, they were in danger of being killed. So we always had these subconscious messages being sent to us that we were mm. not part of nature. Nature would kill us unless we dominated mm -hmm. it and mastered it. Um, mm -hmm. And now we're finding that that frame of reference has led us to where we are, which is rapidly on our way to our own extinction. And we can stop that yep. and we can stop what we're doing to nature we still have time and it's good to see so many people realizing that kindness to themselves, kindness to their environment, kindness to their brothers and sisters next to them is mm -hmm. the only way we can move forward because this whole movement of violence and negativity has run society for so long. And you're, mm -hmm. you know, like what you're doing, you're bringing compassion back into the business model and bringing compassion back into a working model so that it can also be part of a, an all around, mm -hmm. you know, society. And, and, and I think that's important. We need to bring it in. Um, yeah. You know, unless we can all break down capitalism and live as Arnicus, but until then. <laughs> no, well, it's amazing that there's things that we can do with uh, now with the internet and the social mm -hmm. sharing economy. And there's ways of that you don't have to do drudgery. And I think that, um, ultimately, we all just want to, you know, live it to create paradise and 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 heal the earth and live in harmony um, and focus on our passions and you know exp exploration and sciences and art. So um, I do dream of a world where we can do that, and I think that that's even I think that it's the beginnings of like the vegan movement is just this gateway to um, uh, like a more compassionate and uh, hopefully unified, like living, so. Beautifully yeah. said. 
Beautifully said. I like that. And and thank you for being there to help people find ways to to overcome that. I mean, it's intimidating when you think, how do I change? And all of a sudden, nutrition, you have to go relearn it. And that is very mm -hmm. intimidating. And a lot of people don't have, you know, 30 hours a day to throw into Google and figure out what to do. So it's very mm. important that there are voices like yours out there that can help people transition, help people think in a holistic version mostly about how they can feel better and by nature they will you know everything else will emanate from that um you know last week we talked about i lived in a rasta camp for a while and my rasta elder um wow cool. said that you know what you had to do was listen to your heart and your heart said do good do good, mm -hmm. do good. so in their perspective i love everything that. we do you know generates energy and they have an expression called word sound power and word sound power is everything that you say or think puts an energy out into the universe and that creates the fabric of how the universe runs so you have to be uh, careful and they use a lot of old expressions like you know um if you're gonna dig a pit don't dig one dig two you know because you're anything you do that is negative out there will bring down the whole thing in general yep um, yeah so you know i, I love, love that the, and actually uh, rastas are, are vegan right at the ital diet they're um, for the most part yeah they they do have now fish maybe too. not but yeah but you know when okay. i was down there i had amazing ital food and it was fresh i had a uh, what was considered an ital pizza there's no dairy or anything mm -hmm. yeah it took the guy about I want to say about 40 minutes to make it for us and it was all raw and it was amazing wow. so uh they have been using it and uh it's actually their diet comes from the old testament um uh -huh. so they follow the old testament's rules um and yeah but aside from their fish use it is really it's fully vegan and it, it's just incredible uh bruce says he used to live with a Rasta. So Bruce, you might, uh, we smoked a lot of weed, says Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's another good way to be in connection with the nature around you and yeah. the plants around you. Plants are healing in many ways. Um, you know, I, I'm wearing the preemptive shirt, which is a CBD company my friend okay. runs. Um, and the reason I wear it is I love because, CBD. see, yeah, it's amazing, amazing. And I never used it. I didn't think it would work until I started having a lot of pain from my cancer stuff, radiation, and he just kept giving it to me for free, saying, try it, try it, try wow. it. And he did it as an act of kindness. And I find that when it comes to, you know, um, especially CBD companies, a lot of them are acts of love. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so I do, I do want to tell everybody too, that if you need to buy CBD and it's legal in your area, if you go to preemptive, you can use my name, with the number 15 after it and you'll get 15% off. Uh, I don't get anything for it. I'll never know who buys there or doesn't, but if there's any way, any sharing discount, the love, exactly. Yeah. Uh, the more people that that's amazing, can feel good, the better that we all, I think, uh, will feel good because we all bring each other up and, you know, um, and that's, yes. Yeah. A beautiful yeah. To, to see and then to see our group that we have today is a lot of people that have all made transitions in one way or the other. I see my friend Jesse Schwartz is on. He's a, a doctor, but he was on a um, uh, boat with me for a little while where we were going to go pick up um, illegal fishing gear. And Jesse made the most amazing vegan Indian mm. food and uh, mm. got me hooked on a bunch of stuff I've never tried oh, before. Oh, so good. Vegan Indian, oh, yeah. Man. It's so easy too, like chickpea curries and mm. so many like the spinach um i forget what it's called but yeah there's so many amazing dishes in uh in in, in indian food that's vegan yeah. and mediterranean food yeah. and M middle eastern food and everything mm. you know every culture every mm. religion ultimately too is uh, like you said how the ital like they they go by the old testament and it's it's like it really actually most like anyone who's observing religion, um, it does go eating meat and especially the way we do it goes against, um, goes against the fundamentals of their, of most religions actually. So, um, it's true. It's true. There's always rules yeah. and 
you know, I, I always thought that was kind of interesting that when it comes to vegetables, they're not like, do not eat the one with fruit from the tree. But, you know, when it comes to meat, they're like, yo, watch out for this one. It's uh, yeah. dangerous. Yeah, and there, there's real reasons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There is, yeah. yeah. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting that although the science has changed over time, there's been a knowledge of it for so long in so many cultures. Mm -hmm. You know, and, yeah. So I just hope that, you know, uh, people who especially they use religion as a reason why they eat animals, I'd hope that they can look deeper into the meaning and a lot of the um, also just the like the um, the, just the ethical, uh, you know, w what what is right in their heart. Like, you know, it's like you said, everything, every there's with every action, there's a reaction in the universe. And um, do good. So if you go, if you live by which most religions are you know, hopefully based on is, uh, doing good. And it feels so much better spiritually to be vegan. I, I, I know that for sure firsthand. So, um, I didn't grow up actually with really religion. I grew up kind of culturally Jewish, but very kind of atheist in my thinking. And, um, it's veganism. Um, I don't see it as a religion, but I see it as a, um, as just a, it's like a, um, sp spiritual movement. So it's, yeah, it's really for that reason too is really beneficial. Yeah, I love I, that's so true. I was raised the same way, and uh, very much like you. You know, I didn't really find my understanding through that particular path, but you know, uh, now that I, now I do and I have, and I can I can say that I'm, I'm sure it's not the same for everybody, but for me. When I stopped, I felt less um, aggressive and less, uh, yep. you know, you feel like kind of like you're at war with the world around you and there's always, everything's a yep. battle. And, and now scared, I fear. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. we're eating the fear of um, the animals. So mm. actually a lot of the time people live in fear and I was constantly, I would be up and I would shoot up in the middle of the night with existential fears of the world. They're just like, we're all going to die, like, you know, really scary thoughts. Yeah. I don't have those anymore. And it's it, nothing has changed really. It's just, and it's amazing that how much, you know, is in our heads isn't, it's kind of, it's, and it's real because we're, when we're eating fear and we're eating suffering, actually, it is going to try, it's going to affect our energy. So, so yeah, it makes sense. If you bring in negative, it's going to, that's what you're going to be staying in. Yeah. You know, yeah. So. Good. Well, that's, I, you know, and that's, I think that's a fantastic way to sort of, you know, wrap, wrap up today is, you know, uh, like I said, it's kindness on all levels. It's kindness on, um, yeah, Camilla has something interesting here. She says, I really have to question who I was before I transitioned over to being vegan. I didn't really feel alive as I do now. It's awakening. Yeah, and totally. That is one, um, totally familiar story I hear with. Yeah. Everybody that's kind of, uh, you know, if you see a whole new way, in so many different aspects. And I think that's what makes a lot of zealots too, because they're just like, oh my God, I gotta see this. But in reality, yeah. you know, we have to uh, rem always, you know, remember that we, we, we had our time before we transitioned over to, and, you know, we need to make sure that yeah. it's, it's offering people something really positive that they can move, you know, towards. Uh, Emma says- And it's such a dream. Yeah. Oh, sorry. sorry, I was gonna say, Emma says, we're all one in the universe. Uh, what affects one affects all. People are generally causing damage and it's hard fighting for the planet and every living being on it. And again, Emma, I agree, but I also say that's why living kindly and compassionately throughout, whether it's to yourself or to the person across from you that doesn't agree with you, is important because you can't bring that negativity in and it's hard. But uh, as Allison was saying, if you make sure to give yourself time, give yourself space in your mind, give yourself the proper yep. food to find your, your, you know, your, your balance, your foundation. Yeah. And it's a never ending journey. Like mm -hmm. in such a, you know, if someone feels, Oh, I'm feeling like low energy on vegan. Well, it's not because you're on low energy on vegan. Maybe you're just not eating the right foods or you're not doing the right. It's just a journey. So we have to just, you know, constantly be, um, with, with the mentality, um, that I now have, which I only got from veganism was really, if this is a lifelong, uh, 
progress, you know, progress, not perfection. So just like, this is just a journey and, you know, we're going to hit hiccups and we can't beat ourselves up or we're going to be faced with really big challenges. And, and it's just, as long as, you know, we come back to that, this is just a journey. We have to do our best that we can. Um, that's like the main thing. So some people think because they cheated one day, they had pizza at some party and they think, oh, I'm now I'm not vegan anymore or something. Yeah. And I just want to tell like people, you know, I've had those days, I don't have them now, but I've had them when I was transitioning. And over the first year that I was transitioning, I had certain things that we can't as a community, as a vegan community, we can't like beat each other up or beat ourselves up. It's, we all just have to be focused on doing better now and doing better tomorrow and just how we can just keep learning more and researching more to feed ourselves what, what's optimal for ourselves. So. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. It, and, and so well said, you said it very perfectly. I think that there's so many elements that come together and as you start to change one thing, it's like this fantastic uh, domino effect, you know, of positivity. Yes. And, um, absolutely. Yeah. And it says a never ending journey. Um, Tony says, I definitely didn't feel less aggressive after going vegan. I felt more angry. I was focusing on the animals. There is that aspect too, uh, for sure. You know, and I know that that yeah. it, it really ignites a lot of passion. It's why yeah. I brought up direct action. Um, and, you know, guys, if you haven't gone to the direct action website, go to the direct action website, sign up. You can see what they're doing. You can find ways if you're interested to help fight, um, help with uh, supporting their legal defense. You know, they, uh, you know, Prius facing eight felonies at the moment for just going in and exposing what was happening. Wow. I'm following Priya as well. So I follow her journey and yeah. she's an incredible person. All these she people, is. like I'm getting more involved in the animal liberation in Montreal and the movements going on here, um, like on the ground and everything. Um, so, and I also help people. Tra if, you, if you're, if you have, you have to be an example of the, you know, the vegan movement. So if you, st if, if you're, you're doing your best, if you're thriving, that's going to attract people to it. So you're actually going to be causing, a, you're going to be helping, um, you know, a lot more people transition to vegan and be curious about it and want to join. So important to stay, even if it's like, cause I'm, you know, if I think about anything, like I think about, I have a friend who actually works at a foie gras restaurant and it just breaks my, it, it, that, like thinking about these things that are happening on like every second, every single day right now, you know, they're going to get you really down and you could break down in tears thinking about it. But it's like just important to, you know, be living it and like just exuding your best self so that other people want to join and um, not, you know, it's so hard to not be um, angry at what's going on and we are and that's what propels us but to like be, you know, alchemizing that anger into like how we're going to change things now. Like we have to manifest all together that thing. We're going to change it. We're going to do this. And we have to unify as, as vegans and as all humans, not just vegans, but like as people are generally kind and they do want to do what's best. So we just have to find ways to include everyone and like do little challenges. Like you're doing plastic. I think every single step that you take in the direction of either healing or doing something good for the planet is all going to lead us ultimately to, the same path. So people are coming at it from different um, ways and they're doing their part. And as I think we have to encourage that people just do their part and then it'll like people more and more will just, you just, it's a journey. So once you start doing good, it's contagious and it's addictive and all that good stuff. Actually, you can upward spiral and help people to also do the same. So, uh, and, and, you know, and it's important because when you make a, food choice, you're making a choice for today, but when you make a plastic choice, you're making sure you're not endangering any animals down the road. Um, so to bring it back to, to, I'm really glad you're gonna do the plastic challenge with me. I think it'd yes. be very interesting to see, cause you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a single guy, so I'm gonna have my thing that I buy and you guys are a family. So I'm curious yeah. to see how trapped are we? You know, I mean, what can we, not get away with, as I said, you know, some people are going to need medication. You can't not get that in plastic. So we have things that we, this is going to be an interesting way to see what we can ask to change and what we can avoid on our day to day. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really curious to see, I'm sure there's going to be some surprises, things that we 
aren't allowed to have anymore, um, you know, versus, uh, you know, what I, I'm sure there's going to be, yeah, some stuff we have to give up and some surprises and, yeah. Uh, so I'm, well, I'm, it's a great exercise as well in conscious living. So just yeah. being mindful of it every single time. And then, you know, you do end up making changes as more, the more that you're mindful of it. So even, yeah, it's a great place to start doing a one week challenge. I, I'm really excited to do that with you. Uh, yeah, this is gonna be fun. And hopefully everyone else will join us as well. You're going to see the live post. I'm going to be in touch with Allison after the show. and We're going to figure out exactly how we're going to Make sure we get this, you know, get the get this challenge on online and and really push it, you know. And as you know, I've um, just set up a a very basic idea, which is what if we just, you know, they're talking about banning plastic straws, but what if we push to ban plastic bottles? It's a very simple solution that could remove a massive amount of issues that we have. So, oh my God, absolutely! You know, it's it's very simple, and I hope that doing the plastic challenge. Um, I hope that by doing the plastic challenge, we are going to bring that up every day and get as many signatures as we can. It's going to go to all the companies that make the plastic bottling plus uh, senators on both sides of the aisle. So everyone feels represented and we can try to talk about maybe changes. And there's countries that have gotten rid of plastic like Kenya, Rwanda, New Delhi, uh, France. Montreal is starting. Montreal has yes. announced. Uh, Valerie Plante has announced um, that we are going to be, I think, by 2021 or something. Yeah. So that's really, really exciting. And we're also, I've also uh, invested in a zero waste vending machine, which is going to be, um, I could, you know, share some links with you, but that's <gasps> yes, like a please. new we're going to be replacing vending machines. Like, so at my yoga studio now that I, I work at, we're replacing it with this vending machine that is. Um, I'll, I'll explain to you how it works. It's really interesting. Wow. But yeah, there's no bottled uh, drinks in there. It's all raw dehydrated uh, juice powders that you just, when it calibrates, like when you push the button, it calibrates with water and everyone has a water bottle on them. You know, people have their own reusable bottles now. So it's, people will, are forced to carry it with them if they want to have uh, these really, really healthy organic juices. And then like, you I know, it's going to hopefully idea. replace yeah, hopefully replaced in gyms and airports and schools. Mm -hmm. And like schools are a really big problem. Schools and hospitals, I find to be very, um, they really need to be leading. We need to be putting a lot more pressure um, on schools and hospitals because these are places of education and also of healing. So yeah. it's like really important that those institutions get as much, um, first of all, plant-based, which is a huge challenge right now. Also, I have signatures going for a school, for uh, our public schools to be, um, have dairy have uh, non-dairy and non-meat options so um and also for hospitals and stuff for that's really important but yeah there's so many things that we all need to get so involved with because as soon as we start to open our eyes around us um these are all things that if we have power in numbers it, they are possible to shift so we just have to have enough people uh on board and making things happen like that and, you know, a great example of that is them getting rid of the bottled water in San Francisco airport. Yeah. That is for the U.S. at least. That's a that's a big step, uh, you know, Huge. for us. Yeah. So I think that, you know, we can do that little by little. And, yeah, you guys are a good, uh, good example. I know I've been keeping you on longer than we had expected. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> there's Thank so much to get to talk about, so much we still want to talk about. But I do want to <clears throat> make sure we're going to put the link down there. But... Listen, everybody, if, if you have more questions and even just get some good ideas about how to transition into a healthier day-to-day -day lifestyle, you have questions about yoga, you, I'm fascinated to hear about the zero waste vending machine. And that's the whole thing is rethinking how we're thinking as we're moving forward. And Allison, you're a wealth of information on this. So I, thank you so much for being on today. Thank you. This has just been great. I mean, I, and, and you know what? I think we're going to have to come back and do another. We're going to have to do uh, About another gut. show. Yes, please. A uh, gut show. I would yes. love that. Thank you so much. It's been such an honor to be on your show. And uh, keep thanks. your your topics are so incredible. I love your what you're doing. Thank you so much. There, yeah. Thanks for joining today, being part of the conversation. We heard a lot of amazing things. And it's great to hear so many people on this journey to try to get healthier. Yay. <laughs> Look my at that other beautiful one, my smile. One, yeah. Hey there. Completely vegan baby. Oh, uh. three years. Yeah, never had it. 
<laughs> so, nice. <laughs> and it's yeah. it's great, to, like I said, to talk to you and to know that your family is doing it. And I think that that's a huge inspiration. And that's another way that we can think forward and think in a new fashion. Um, so, yeah, everybody check out Allison's page. Check out her information. Hit her up personally with any kind of questions that you may have. And we all have questions. And Allison's going to be joining us on the Plastic Challenge this week. And remember, everybody, we're going to do one week without buying any piece of plastic and see what is available in the world for us. <laughs> I love the challenge and I love making do. So I'm so excited for that. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, we'll uh, thanks again for being on and we'll be talking to you this week and doing the plastic challenge and, and we'll see you again on here soon. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Allison. Talk soon. And guys, I wanted to just put this up real fast. This is the challenge. This is the uh, simple. Go to change.org. You can see it on my website. You can see it on my profile. And you can check it out. So we're going to just come back now to... Oh, there I am. Hello. Okay. So anyway, that was incredible. It was a great talk today. It was really amazing to talk to Allison. And I can't wait to see all those recipes. You know, I mean, feeding for a family of four for under 10 in a healthy fashion, that is fantastic. And I understand that, you know, that's one of the many, many aspects that uh, there is, I think, maybe some myths and misconceptions floating around that eating vegetable would be way more expensive than eating meat. And if you think about it, it's kind of an odd concept in the sense that, you know, what it costs to grow a vegetable is very different. So it's, there's, there's a logical disconnect there. That's very odd. Uh, oh, hey, Beth, nice to see you. And uh, yeah, it's, oh, Karen, I like to, um, I like what you said earlier, Karen, about we all just have to take care of our own footprint. And that is the, what we leave on the world. Like we were talking about before, you know, what you, your interaction with the world, we're either going to be a sewer pipe or we're just spewing our trash out for the environment to deal with, or we're going to be ecological Roombas and leave the room cleaner than we found it. And Karen said, you know, we have to take care of our own footprint. Um, you know, and Karen, you're right. You know, these kids have an amazing perspective and they know that things need to change and they're open to discussion. And that's the big thing with the adults. We find always right that we're not so open to it. So that's what's great about this show. It's what's great about I love having these conversations with everybody because these are open minded you know, adults and, and we have different opinions and I think it's important. I think it's important to listen to everyone's opinion. And again, you know, um, vegan based, but it's not, you know, not everyone has that perspective. And I want people on both sides to always be here, always talking, always joining into the conversation. And, you know, like I said, um, what Allison had to say today, I think is is a very old known key to happiness, which is be kind, be kind to yourself. And you know, they always say, once you love yourself, you can love others. And I think that that goes important. Make sure that, you know, you feed yourself in a way that makes you feel good and you take care of yourself and you keep your thoughts positive. And remember that when things get rough, we're all here together. We're all part of one big group, reach out reach out to us, reach out to me, reach out, you know, we're all here for each other. So thanks again for being on the show today, everybody. Amazing day with Allison. Amazing to get some tips and tricks on how to make that transition over. And she's going to put some incredible um, recipes down for us on how to do it affordably and a guides on how to make that transition as we go. We're all learning every day. We're all, as she said, progress, not perfection. I love that. I wish I could uh, just have that as my motto in life. When people met me, they would go, okay, he's, he's progressing. He's not perfect. It's what it is. <laughs> so, all right. Well, thank you, everybody. And uh, it was great to see you guys. Thank you for being here on the Conservation Conversation. And next week, I'm very excited. We're going to be talking 
to Kenny Hinkle, who is a long-term original Florida water activist. And we're going to talk about a topic that doesn't come up very much, which is sugar and big sugar and how it's killing us. Not maybe the way that you think. So anyway, Mitch, I can't wait. I hope I know I see you next week on that. And as you said, we can, which I love that hashtag. And you're absolutely right. We can. And it's all about the unification and being kind, being compassionate, and moving together as a unified voice. Because we all want the same thing, which is a better future. So everybody, enjoy your week. Do good. Do good. And I can't wait to talk to you next week. Talk to you.